Hello, everyone. Hello. My name is Rachel. We're going to get started in just a moment. It looks like we have other people coming in, so we want to make sure everyone gets into our Zoom room and situated. So thank you all for joining us. We will start in a couple seconds. How do you get the picture? Who's asking that? How do you get the picture on the screen? I forgot. Block your camera. Oh, I see. I see. I see. I was. I want to say hi to some people. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> hi, Hiram. Hi, Kelly. Hi. Hi, sweetie pie. How are you? Hello, Queen Diane. My baby. Hello, hello. Hi, Grace. Hi. We're hello, so happy. <laughs> yes, I'm happy. I'm so, We're so glad happy to see up you in home. here. Hi, Tom. Mr. Donnellan. Maybe your mic is not on. Hi, Jan. Hi, Janice. Oh, Luther. Hello there, Luther. Hey there. I'm so happy. Tom, did you say hello? Yeah, I'm sorry. I did have my mic on. Uh, mute. I'm doing the best that I can. This is the first time I've hosted them, and I'm too excited, everyone. So just tell me to calm down when you want to say, calm down, Lady Dot. Calm down a bit. <laughs> We love the exuberance. So why don't I get started? Thank you. you. Don't need all this energy so contained. Let's let's let it out. So uh, I just wanted to welcome everyone. My name is Rachel Zukowski. I'm the program services manager um, at Prince George's County Memorial Library System. We are so pleased to have some special guests with us tonight for our poetry open mic. So I hope our participants are ready to share. Um, a couple of housekeeping things. If you'd like to uh, use the chat, you're welcome to communicate with us through the chat. Um, also, um, if you would not like to be recorded during your turn, then you can let me know and I will pause the recording before you go on. Uh, another thing I wanted to, still admitting people, so that's a good thing. Um, so I would like to first say thank you so much to our esteemed host, Lady Di, who is poet and author. And a lot of people are excited. Um, I'd also like to say uh, thank you to our, our distinguished guest, Cavalieri, Cavalieri, our poet laureate for Maryland. So we are excited to hear from them. Um, I'm actually gonna let Grace do a bit of more in-depth introduction to um, Sylvia Beverly, also known as Lady Di, so we can get a more deep dive into the work that she's done. And it's always nice to have someone who knows your work to introduce you. So I will hand it over to Grace. And then after Grace presents, um, I will hand it over to Lady Di to do the hosting of the rest of the open mic. Well, the introduction to Lady Di is, uh, took about 35 minutes. But I've whittled it down to just the tip of the iceberg because she is a force of nature. Her first book was Forever in Your Eyes. And I have her cooking book, which is called Cooking Up South. Then there is a book called Experience Express Expansion, which consolidates the collected voices co cooperative. Now you may remember them when it was just Sister Joy and Lady Di, but then Bernardo Andre Taylor joined them, and they have been going strong since 1995. That is 25 years strong in Prince George's County. She's also the poet of excellence in Prince George's County for 2020, and was that before. She has hosted uh, senior citizens as an educator and put out an anthology called Poetry from Our Hearts. She has been part of the original core staff for Hunger X with Hiram LaRue, forming that collective that is doing such good work with poetry. She is um, a person that has, actually I have too much here to say, she is the matriarch of the Beverly family. That means she's the pillar of the house in which they live. 
and oh. she's my very best friend. So that's who Lady Di is. She's your host, and I'm Grace Cavalieri. Thank you so much, Grace. And we can continue to show some love for Grace as we join in unity. Unity is power. I, I will be burning the candle throughout our event tonight. I'm so thankful that all of you could be with us this evening. We're gonna hear from Grace. But first, I'm gonna do a couple of poems and Let's see, um, and, and I'll introduce Grace. Um, my first poem is Faith Abides. Torment cries across indigo waters. Deliberate message flies above lofty mountains. Don't you hear our cries? Sorry tears fill monumental fountains. Let movement Continue past our pain. Let unity flow beyond fever feverish clay hills. Global demand of e emotions bring closure and ignite policy change. A change so desperately needed. Serious thoughts of Rosa Parks. Horrid thoughts of Emmett Till. Sandra Bland, George Floyd, Terrence Johnson, Breonna Taylor. Thoughts of my baby brother, Daoud Ahmed Akil, beaten to death by nation's capital police, retching thoughts of our ancestors, beaten, hung, strangled, suffocated, unable to breathe, so much anguish, horror, suffering endured and still surfaces at will. Continue to cry out. Let our voices be heard. A call for equality and justice. A call for peace. A call for unity. A call for leaders to faithfully lead. For all to replace fear with faith. Gather together in reverence, faith abides, guided by our kind and loving Lord and Savior. Mercy, 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 have mercy on our souls. Let us be strengthened toward righteous actions. Yea, a change gonna come. The key is love. Tell someone you love them today. And for our children, at the beginning of this pandemic, I did a little workshop for the children and I wrote them this prayer poem. Dear children, it's your time to love yourself. Be ever so grateful for all you have. Please pray before bedtime and each day when you wake, Always hold close three virtues, faith, hope, and charity. Remembering charity is love and love is best of all. Make sure you are kind, loving, and brave. Know you are loved. I love you, Lady Di. Well, thank you so much. And I'm just excited to introduce my BFF, Grace Cavalieri, Poet Laureate for the State of Maryland. Grace Cavalieri is Maryland's 10th Poet Laureate. She's the author of 26 books 26 books and chapbooks of poetry. 20 short form and full length plays. What the Psychic Said is her new publication, Goss Publications 2020. The Precious, the previous book 
of poems is Showboat, which I have meant to have it closer to me, I'm sorry. Right here, I wanted to show you this. Showboat, this is a wonderful book. Goss Publications 2019, a, about 25 years as a Navy wife. Her latest play, Quilting the Sun, was produced at the theater for the new city, New York City, 2019. She founded and produces The Poet and the Poem for Public Radio. Now from, now from the Library of Congress, celebrating 43 years on air. We just, you can even open your mic and show some love for Grace Cavallari. Thank right you, here. Lady Di. Thank you, my love darling. You. Love Thank you, much. Grace. Thank you, darling. So much. Always get your best friends to introduce you. That's my advice to you. Uh, I, as Poet Laureate, do a lot of teaching. So I'm going to read for about 10 minutes. Lady Di says 11 minutes. And I'm going to talk about poems that come out of teaching. And so the first one is an exercise I do, which asks people to just take 10 random words and string them together like beads on a string. And so I call this a morning poem. I ask all of my students to write a poem every morning that they wake up just using 10 random words. So my words, I forget, I think they were like dream, fish, uh, fire. And so here's my morning poem using 10 random words. Morning poem, each of us has a pond Mine is deep. I sleep beneath the water in a silence so clear the bloom of desire melts from me. Lightning turns fire to the water of pleasure. Fish are jumping in my heart. No, they are real fish dreaming of me. No, it is a real dream. This is a real heart. So I'm encouraging all of us writers to just pick 10 beautiful words every morning and put them together and language will always lead you to your heart, always. Another exercise I do with my students is called the elevator poems. And that is where uh, I ask each person to go into the building of their lives and push a button of their elevator and go to each floor of their lives and get out and see what's there. If you're 20 years old, you have 20 floors. And you can push that button and close your eyes and get out on the 10th floor and see what was happening or the 12th floor. And you can always access poetry if you do this. So I did it myself. And I went into the building of my life and I got off on the third floor. And this is exactly what I saw and exactly what happened. Language lesson. It was a day much like this, gray with drizzle, my mother took me visiting, which was a big event. She didn't drive a car, seldom went out. How did we get there? My father, perhaps, who worked in a bank nearby, he must have dropped us by this large white house with grand pillars. I can't imagine why we were wanted there, but I met a boy my age. I suppose that was it. Get the toddlers together, ready to learn to play. I assessed the toys and took my pick, a brand new trike, and oh, how it went, as shiny as it looked. Well, my new playmate ran crying, filled with envy and complaint. Me wants the bike, me wants it now. I stopped, the wheels froze on the rug as I looked at my foe. Me wants the bike, me wants the bike? I felt the sweet pleasure of superiority, the first ache of it, age three. There would be no contest. I could play as long as I liked. I had him by the pronoun. It was the happiest day of my life. And it is true, little girls can talk faster than little boys, but I must say that it is just, did I mute myself, Rachel? No. So um, it was a happy, at three, I really remember feeling so superior and thinking, 
this guy hasn't got a chance. So um, another way that we teach poetry is to think about a social action because poetry is the voice of the people and poetry is the conscience of the nation. Most people think, well, it's the icing on the cake. You know, poetry is a hobby. It's a frill. What does it matter? Poetry is the cake itself because it rinses off language and speaks the truth. Rachel, if ever I moot myself, you're in charge. So this is called How a Poem Begins. It's a little thing. Could be the long O's in Kosovo or a woman alone in the street after the hurricane sweeping Honduras. Perhaps we tell of the child beneath a flood in New Orleans or feet bloody from walking the rubble of Afghanistan. They say poetry is insignificant. Such a tiny voice, no one can hear. Sometimes it says, I can't breathe. That's why we write of little things, insignificant things. Um, another point of writing is to preserve the beloved. And that is a time-honored tradition in poetry, that we preserve the ones we love so that they will never be lost. Once they're put on the page, they are made permanent. And that is the obligation and the vowel of the poet, who we are in charge of civilization. Otherwise, it's just mud that people are wading through. So we document lives, and that in that way, make a record of humankind. I'm going to um, then talk about my husband who died um, a couple of years ago. And we were married one breath less than 60 years. But I knew him in junior high school because we both went to junior three in Trenton. And I, I really, he was, he was voted the best dressed boy. And I really, liked him very much. He was a, a crossing guard at junior high school number three. So this is about that time when I was very young in the seventh grade and it's called safety. Safety. When you were in the ninth grade and I was in the seventh, you were a crossing guard keeping order at junior high school number three. No one was disobedient when you wore that wide yellow strap across your chest. No one bruised another, caused trouble, or so much as threw a stone. No one cracked a joke about you, a man in uniform. How did that yellow vest feed your soul to let you know someday you'd fly a plane just to feel the power of a strap across your chest? What liberation to know how to be in charge, strong and capable flying through gunfire and lightning again and again to come back to me. Although we were young, you were 15 and I was 13. Since then, I've never known the world without you. Now I must be 12. And that's the way it feels when you are left after you've known someone three quarters of your life or eight tenths of your life and then you're like you were the minute before you met him. So it's carried forth into the household chores because you find all of a sudden you don't know how to turn off the dehumidifier or fix the thermostat. This is called mechanical physics. I never knew how to put two pieces together. Say the garden hose, for example, it's nozzle, undetectable. I flooded the new coffee pot because the sections didn't quite match. Can you imagine how hard it was to convince myself I could do anything with more than one panel? I didn't even try. Ikea sent furniture in boxes, all marked number 44. I could feel the lessons yet to learn, the escape from reason. I could feel my human failure before UPS left the house. Now, in the lightness 
of the last of this day? How do I know who will hold me at sunset? I cannot make the alive and the dead parts come together as we once were. I cannot, cannot match the seams, square the ending. And I'll just read one more. It's called Work is My Secret Lover. And it has an epigraph by Paul Zimmer, which goes, Jasmine even refer to sex as work. Some primitive, primitive people believe that death is work. Work is my secret lover. Work takes the palm of my hand to kiss in the middle of the night. It holds my wrist lightly and feels the pulse. Work is who you'll find with me when you tiptoe up the stairs and hear my footsteps through the shadows. You'll see me lift my arm to stretch and then lean down to put my head to it. Work has threatened to die once for all that was left unsaid. So I took to it like a young bride, flushed with excitement, adultery too, yes, I admit it, on all the holidays when others gathered at the table I was dreaming of it, making love to the movement of paper, the words from my lips, the feel of it. Sometimes when company came, I threw a tablecloth over my work and set the plates and everyone acted as if nothing were visible, pretending I was the good hostess that I was. While on the Christmas tree, work waited patiently among ornaments gleaming like a groom. I am guilty as charged, for nothing else could buy my feelings. And why would I sell the only thing that ever loved me the way I loved back? But my beautiful, long-lasting, faithful lover, my friend who will never leave. Thank you very much. This is Other Voices, Other Lives by a local publisher, Alan Squire, and it's a compendium of poems, plays, and interviews from the Library of Congress. And I'm really grateful to have it all in one handful, and I'm very grateful to share it with you. Thank you very much. Now I want to hear other people's poetry. Thank you. Thank you so much, Grace. You're such a dear sweetheart. In the chat room, I saw something that I was thinking, I think it came from Hiram saying yes. that, Ken must be grinning, and I would say the same. You are the sweetest lady, so humble and kind, so very encouraging to so many people, and we just love you so much for that. Back at you. Especially the way that you do the poet and the poem, a Library Congress experience. And I'm so thankful to have been a part of that one time. Big part. Thank you so much, Grace. I can't thank you enough. Thank you. Everybody, unmute everybody and show some love for my BFF, Grace Cavalieri. Love it. Love it. Thank you so much. Great, great. Thank you. Great. Thank you. As we move into our next section, I'd like to quickly interject. I don't know if um, Lady Di has gotten the list that I put in the chat, but we have a lot of interested readers. So if you'd like me to reiterate that, I'm happy to. Um, I also want to give a shout out to uh, Creative Suitland. I meant to do that in the introduction. So they are co-hosting with us today. So yes. we're really appreciative of them. So thank you again, Grace. Um, now, Lady Di, would you like me to read the list off or do you want to uh, take it from the chat? Um, I'll, I'll ask you, um, I have some of the names down and I wanted to call on our poet laureate from Prince George's County, Joy Alford, my dear friend, Sister Joy. Well, thank I, you. Woo, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Joy, I'm looking for you. Are you there? Let's see. I am. Yes. I wonder why, why do I have myself on the screen? I'm I knew you were in the room, Sister Joy, but I'm looking for you on my phone. But you go ahead and speak, sweetie. I see you. Okay. 
Okay. Well, first of all, congratulations already on a fabulous affair. Oh, uh, absolutely. And uh, wonderful to hear Grace as always. The, fr the poem that I'd like to share is simply titled Somehow. Somehow. Despite the foreboding reality of now, I want to somehow find and share light that will illuminate not just my journey, but that of so many who, like me, feel lost in the darkness of the day. I plead, beg God to use me to bring a word of hope, to overshadow despair with faith and belief for which far too many have become a faded memory. His word echoes like thunder, flashes like lightning inside my soul as tears flood my face. I choke, sobbing, praying, trying through blinding, stinging tears to somehow find my way past the pain. His word was simply, hold on to all that I have taught you for you are not alone. Through pain, my head, head reels and my heart breaks as I read the soaring body count while trying to hold on. I know my tears are not the answer, but they won't stop. I know his word is and will always be all that is needed ever. So, I hold on and pray, even through blinding, stinging tears, despite dread and despair, believing there will be a better tomorrow that allows the victory of life somehow. Ooh, beautiful. Nice. That's beautiful. Thank you so much. I didn't ask him in advance, but I got the other collective voices. You know, Sister Joy, Bernardo, and I are collective voices. And I want to know if my brother is available to um, come next. Bernardo. Hello, Diane. Lady Di, how are you? Hey there, Bernardo. Uh, I wasn't really prepared to share anything. I was I'm just, just, just now getting off work, signing off. Uh, but I wanted to make sure I made your event. Uh, I appreciate it. If you give me a moment, uh, allow someone else to read, I'll try to find something to share with you. Okay. I just say the Collective Voices is always ready. And you also have some poetry in your head that you just recite off to sing song poet. And I'm giving you a blast. But um, I will go to my next loving, loving friend, Queen Diane Wilborn Parks. And I didn't get a chance to see if she said yes or not, but I asked her in advance. Diane, are you there, sweetie? Okay. She, when I asked, she was there at that time. Diane? Did Lady Di? Yes. I found the poem I want to do. Okay, then you go and I'll seek out Diane. Diane and Hiram um, have another event that they have to go to. So I was going to have them come on after Bernardo. But if not, we'll just move forward. Bernardo? Okay. When you said I have one on my head, I almost went into, I can't flow like you flow, go like you go, blow like you blow. But... I found a poem I wanted to do. Yeah, I just it was, uh, and I'm I'm glad you mentioned Hiram because this poem was was freshly debuted uh, Sunday. The name of this poem is called Through. Wonderful. For several days there was no way, nothing I could do. I kept hearing Billy Joel play through the long night with you. A metaphor for scores of deaths and left behind debris. 
bobbing like plastic bags of trash in the ocean of Corona's darkness. Meanwhile, in America, a more brutal harshness, a heartless Ahab has grabbed the helm. An ignorant individual we have found as again and again he runs the ship aground. With the pounding of lies disguised as news, where the podium hides the bloodstains on his shoes, and his answers describe how he does not have a clue. I turned up the volume two through a long night with you. I play it to relay it to my inner child that wants to smile and laugh and play again together in the park with all his friends. It moves me, soothes me, comforts me against the answer when it is in a couple of days, it is going to be down to close to zero. What is guidance is not clear, so I turn up the volume again, imagining Billy as my father, brother, friend, my heavenly father singing, bringing me to promise not to leave me or forsake me. Wherever this vessel takes me, no matter how long, to just hold on to the clues he gave me, these memories of people, places, songs. I'll be there, he shares, to revive, reassure, renew, redeem, redress, reside through the long night with you. Thank you. I love it. So beautiful. It reminds me of a love poem at the end when you say that last part. Um, could be. It could be God loving us, letting us know, so, I got you. you, I'm holding you, and you're going to be all right. That's good. Great message for us, Bernardo, for now. Thank you so much. I wanted to call on um, Hiram, if he's still here. I'm, I'm right here, Lady Di. Thank you, Hiram. Hiram, would you like to share? I would, and the most important thing I want to share is a big thank you to you, to the Grace, Grace Cavallari, <laughs> to the library system, and and everyone involved in organizing this wonderful event. Thank As Grace you. said, uh, our poetry, what would we do without it? We couldn't do without it. This poem is a very short one. Um, titled, Your Life. Your life is not the top, but a hillside. Not apples, but their boxes. Not first or second place, but the coming rain. Not eyes so much, but far off voices. Not smart, but smeary. Not wings, but wooden steps. Not the good silver, but rather fog. Mm. Not a perfect circle, but a vine. Not a seed, but an open window. Not completely true but some embers, not forever, but a dot. Thanks, Lady Di. Oh, Hiram, thank you so much. Just beautiful, just lovely. And thank you for sharing this journey of poetry with me. It's been just magnificent. And I don't know what I would have done without poetry during this pandemic. We are just zooming all over the place and glowing along with the Zoom. Thank you. Let's see. Kaniki. Is Kaniki Jakarta there? Kaniki's the poet laureate, another poet laureate. She's the poet hey. laureate, first African American poet laureate for Alexandria, Virginia. Are you there, sweetheart? Hey. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you? I'm good. I'm really enjoying the event. 
It is awesome. And I was so glad to hear Bernard. I don't know if he's still here, but I don't get to hear him often. So just wanted to shout him out. So, Good. Yeah. Would you like, you like to share something? Sure. I didn't know <laughs> I was sharing, but I'm going to do, let, let me, let me, I'm going to move. Me, do you have the one that you just did on Channel 9 the other night? I caught you on the news. Oh, yeah. You know what? Somebody uh, sent me a message and said, somebody said you were on the news. Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I'm fine. I'm looking for it. Let me see. I don't know where that poem is, but so I am going to try. Oh, from memory. Okay. I'll do. I do it from memory. I'll, I'm gonna you can try do it from memory, or you can do one of your other ones, or one of my favorite ones. You know. Um. Let me think. Uh, hmm. Okay. I don't want to take up too much time. I'm gonna do uh, the walking poem because I don't know if I know the other one by memory. So we're going to go there. So the title of this piece is called Walking. Um, wait, hold on. I think I found it. Hold on. It's right here. See, look at God. Which one oh, you find? Oh. Wait a minute. Hold on. I think that beeping is black. Oh. I okay. know. That's people coming in and out, I believe. Yeah, people coming in, I think. Okay. okay. Wait a minute, hold on. I got the book here. You gotta be prepared. You know, this is what you gotta do. You gotta be ready. You gotta stay ready so you don't have to get ready. This is what happens. Okay. Okay. Right. This is the walk. This is the walking poem. When the toddler stands for the first time, an audience assembles, a cheering section emerges. Hope urges a first step. Hands reach towards her in case she needs help. We all know that she can do it. So we wait and we anticipate the steps she'll take, the ones that will give her the cognizance and confidence to walk in her walk. And when she falls, she's met with applause, hands extended, telling her to begin again, encouraging her to begin again, because life is a walk. And we're all willing to talk her through it with a little bit of encouragement. But when an adult stands for the first time, an audience of naysayers assembles, awaiting a downfall, an assembly of onlookers, no hands extended, only fingers pointed in the wrong direction, no compassion, no affection, but life is a walk. And some people are afraid to get lost in the steps of the path. See, sometimes we have to make our own path. Nothing leading the way but determination and hope walking a tight rope of the unexpected, swallowing rejections like a horse pill. But you can't stand still, not if you want to live, not if you're willing to make life for a living, not if you're willing to take a chance on yourself. See, sometimes you have to encourage yourself. Sometimes there'll be no one there to help you but you. Sometimes you have to be your own cheerleader, your own leader, your own boss, Whatever it costs, sometimes you have to go broke to be enriched, to be whole, to mold yourself into yourself. And with God's help, anything, no, everything is possible. Thank you very much, ladies. Thank Diana. you very much. Oh, thank you, Kamiki. Thank you for joining us. Yes. I want to say that you're in the company of two other poet laureates, Grace Cavalieri and Sister Joy. Yes, I saw them. Hey, y'all. I feel so excited having three poet laureates. Yes. So <clears throat> I'm trying to get to as many people that I can. And we have a lot of poets in the house. And I want to be fair to some of the people that I saw in the beginning. Um, as you can see, I called on my friends, but I, I just, I had that privilege. So I did. So I want to call on another friend, but she also was in the house in the very beginning, um, Kelly Navies. Kelly's a dear friend and she's a historian at the African American Museum. Kelly, are you there? I'm here, yes. Hi there, sweetie. I'm um, uh, honored to be here. Thank you for inviting me, Lady Di. And I'm um, just honored to be in the presence of such wonderful poets. Um, I'm going to read a poem that I wrote for my father. And it also has carries the spirit of my great aunt Annette as well. 
Uh, my father passed away at the young age of 47, which as I get older and past that age, increasingly seems just ridiculously young. <clears throat> it's called Journey Back to You. On the corner of Sarah Street and St. Louis sits Sarah Luz. Now this is not just a tongue twister. I'm trying to tell a story, a story about my father many years ago, him little black boy with wizard eyes running from his red brick house on Sarah Street, two blocks north to Sarah Luz for the best fried prawns east or west of the Mississippi. Him running so fast so he can get back home and eat them while they're still hot. Heat rising from the crisp batter till it reaches his mouth. A delicacy remembered so vivid I could taste them as he told me this story of his birthplace, St. Louis, where his first tears dropped from the tip of his nose, where he delivered his loose laugh into the waiting universe. Years later, I returned to St. Louis searching for Sarah Lou's red brick buildings and fried prawns without you, daddy holding my hand. And I began to understand the tumultuous birth of a black child in 1943, while the war raged in the distance, how you would grow and learn to read in segregated schools, segregated St. Louis. Yes, your first teachers were brilliant, you told me, teaching you Afrocentrically long before the term was ever heard. Hungrily, I visit the library you lived in, wondering when you made the jump from Jack London to James Baldwin, reading so much you almost burst with the knowledge of lands far and away from the home that your daddy denied you when he returned from the war. I returned to St. Louis, heavy with longing for the experience of you. Want to know you as a little boy before three sons, two wives, and one me. Before your first taste of wine of woman, before your tongue spit fire and talked truth, before carrying rage became the cancer that killed your body, want to be strong like you. So I sit and listen to your mama's sister, my dear Aunt Anne, as she holds back nothing. You know that song Bessie sang, the St. Louis blues? Well, what they say about the St. Louis woman show is true. She smiles and Bessie winks, both hip to the wisdom of their ways. On this night, we listen to Marley and she born when jazz was young has never heard this prophet before. She rocks back in her easy chair, eyes closed. Then at the end of Redemption Song says, that man has a message. You sure his death was not planned? My dear Aunt Anne bringing me home, digging a lock of her mama's hair from a musty drawer. The thick black braid becomes my travel companion on this journey back to you, to St. Louis red brick buildings and fried prawns at Sarah Lou's. Over turnip greens and leftover turkey, courtesy of Aunt Anne, I argue with my brother, the one named for you. He says that South Africa is not really free because the people don't own the land and that Mandela was brainwashed in prison. I know he's mostly right, except the part about Mandela being brainwashed, but I argue anyway, because he's loud and crazy and always thinks he's right, just like you. Besides, inside, I'm laughing at how his fro is so angry, it's starting to vibrate like a thousand black fists holding back a punch. Yes, it is a new day, and I return to St. Louis, red brick buildings and fried prawns at Sarah Lou's, without you holding my hand, but holding my soul. Daddy, you move in an endless circle within me. I carry your tongue, finishing sentences that you've already begun. Thank you. Thank you so much. And Kelly, we'll always be daddy's girl. Yes. Thank yes. you so much. That was just gorgeous. Wow. OK, I'm going to move right along because I want to get in as many people as I can in the next 15 minutes, they tell me. Kitty, Kitty, did you want to do a poem tonight? <clears throat> so Kitty, are you there? If you are, your mic is muted. Oh, okay. Do you hear me now? Yes. Okay, yes, yes. <laughs> Hi, Kitty. Uh, Hi, how are you? Glad to, to be with everybody and hear such great poetry from everybody. Thank you. Thank you for Kitty. inviting me. Um, okay, so uh, I have a poem that I wrote. Uh, this is an older poem. I haven't really done much writing this summer, but um, I have something. This is from uh, 2000, the year 2000. Uh, and I wrote it May 16th, which was Mother's Day that year. And it's called A Song for Mama. 
Basking in the warm sunlight, a dream come true to more than delight. The soft wind keeps the earth cool as the white clouds drift and move across the sky. Keep your head held high and catch the sun by and by. The animals scurry and play the day away as we watch and take care. The cat and dog lay there together well and fair. Careful crossing the meadow for not to step on the shadow, but near the babbling brook, you can get there if you look. A day of mother, a day to remember where life comes from and how to get there. Together and find the mother and child, keep in from the wild, calm as the clouds go by across the sky. Keep your head held high and catch the sun by and by and see the mother with her child. Thank you, Kitty. That's beautiful. <laughs> Mother's Day. Thank you. Kitty's a poet from, excuse me, On the Green Line. Yes, Poets on the Green Line. I've, that's where I met uh, you, Lady Diane, Sister Joy. Yes, thank you so much for being there with us today. Yes, so glad. Thank you. Um, Luther Jet, is Luther available? Everybody be on standby because we're going to try to get everyone in. Hi, I'm here. Hi, Luther. Thank you, Lady Di. This is great. Thank you. I'm going to read a, a relatively recent poem, and it's <laughs> called Survival. I stayed home even though I wanted to go out. I accepted your gift of berries, even though I didn't need berries, but wanted you to be happy. I went the wrong way down the exit ramp because traffic wasn't moving. I jumped a barrier because I thought the terminal gate was closing. I put on a show of lights and music because everyone was sad. And even though my own sadness was too great. On the path, someone else left a chalk heart no rain could wash away. Thank you. Thank you, Luther. I was muted. Thank you so kindly. That was nice. Um, Wait, Lady Di? Yes. May, may I jump in? We've had a request from the chat room. Uh, if we could maybe name, if you would name the next uh, several participants so people can be ready to be um, on board when their time is to go. Okay, the very next one is Sue Silver, then Kenyana, I'm not familiar with that name, but Kiana, K-E-Y-A-N-A, -E then Revolt. So those would be the next three. All right. Show some, show some love for Sue Silver. Hi, everybody. What a fabulous. This is fabulous. Thank you so much. Thank Some you. Were, I wrote this poem uh, just a couple of months ago, I guess. This is a poem from uh, when I was a child. She rides the waves. At Waimea Beach, the surf breaks far from the shore. I paddle out to where other surfers bob in the water, sit astride their boards, Wait for the waves that come in groups of four or five, break and roll to shore. I am 13. The boards are long, eight feet, two inches thick, fiberglass with one fin. They are hard to maneuver. Swimming out with them, very hard to maneuver, but present a dance floor riding them in. Paddling forward with everything I have, I bolt upright, move to grab some kind of balance. Both arms waiting, stepping into it. Fear and elation, joy and misery. My breath, short and fast. Eating the air, the blue of it all, fat water, 
wave curling under me, shooting me forward. White surf altering my trajectory at any minute with fear biting my ankles. I straighten up as the board rushes forward. I see the shore ahead and other surfers. My heart stammers with dread lest I pitch in. The wave, a living being now, takes me fast, fast, fast down its long mane of blue, a dream of delivery at Waimea. Thank you so much, Sue. That was beautiful. Thank you, thank you. Beautiful, thank you. Kenyana, the artist. Hello, everybody. I love everybody art. Oh my gosh, I love art. So I love everybody's poem. And I thank God for letting me be on this platform. And I'll put all my information in the chat box and also I'm hosting my own open mic as well. Uh, here's go. All in one. The attitude of character to visible character to visible love, to unspoken word. I'm the artist, I'm the artist. He believe in God, believe also in me. I'm a woman, I'm a woman. I'm a woman with faith with God. What matters to me will fall in place to never to justify what you can become. Every day is a new day. Every day is a bright and sunny day. I tend to be with my friends and become even more. My deepest fear is to believe in yourself, to judge me because I am black, this moment of speech, now walk in my shoes, now walk in my shoes, now walk in my shoes, now walk in my shoes. My naysayers can't say what to say about you because I am somebody, because I am somebody. To the natural hair, to the natural eyes, to the natural lips, look at me, I'm natural. He says he turns you, is this mic on? Can I have your attention please? Words and words and words of reality. So why I'm here because I'm the next generation. Thank you. Wow, I am somebody. We all need to look in the mirror and say that to ourselves. I am somebody. Thank you so much. Revolt, is Revolt there? Hi there. Having this wonderful event. It's great to hear all the great poets here. Uh, Thank you for joining us. Yeah, it's my first time. I, uh, I'm a hip hop artist. I got an album that I'm like promoting and stuff. I'll put the link in the chat. And uh, this is a song from it. Can you turn your volume up a little? Uh, yeah, yeah. Let me try to do that. Just a little bit. I got kind of a crazy audio set up here and Zoom just did an update. No. Is that any better? Yeah, that's better. And we got two minutes each person. Um, <clears throat> cool. Yo. This is one for those old times. When your biggest problem was chasing down the ice cream truck, and getting your allowance. Remember the days when we would kick back at our own path, leaving those worries for life. Remember the days when we would kick back at our own path, leaving those worries for life. Nostalgia, that's how I feel about it Empty wallet in my pocket, but I didn't think about it With the homies, cutting class at two To get the five-finger discount on fresh produce Security didn't mind, they knew we was broke Step out the checkout line so I could grab me a smoke Before the Android and the text and phones I kicked it back and spent his home racing the decibel tones Talking back, getting laid, when base we were on Getting paid 20 bucks just from mowing the lawn Up to the crack of dawn, with the boots and splits Saw on the roof of six stories, dropping loogies and spit Throwing in Bottles, waiting for the crash And of course that was me, always busting the raps Holding my ass, pull my pants up So I could run fast, back at the crib It was sure last, y'all Remember the days When we would kick back At our own path Leaving our worries for life Remember the 
Dumped over a text message, found out through Facebook your best friend's pregnant? Kinda crazy. What's happening a day? Every six months get that cell phone upgrade. While the others left back, I was at the cafe to keep the date that we had. But yo, I never heard back, and I don't got cable. Love today's like waiting for better offers on a table. Go home alone, but left the umbrella. Cause I was on the iPhone app, checking the weather. We getting checked out together. Our batteries drained, so I use my voice to sing, singing in the rain. And I'm 24, but I feel 42. Cause I wanna make a deep connection with you. Said I'm 24 now, but I feel 42. Cause computer screens are no substitute for life. Sweet of as the seasons change, it's kind of strange how we can miss yesterday. Responsibilities are growing as we age, it's kind of strange how we can miss yesterday. Leaving those, leaving those, leaving those. Thank you. Beautiful. I love that music. <clears throat> Beautiful. Beautiful words. Our next poet, it's a dear friend poet, Brenda Bunting. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. This poem is called This Grace I Extend for Me. The quaking aspen continues, although the originals are gone. In the soul of us are the voices of our ancestors, potent and strong. Their encouragement brings me clarity to understand what will be. I release the breath that I have been holding, relax my rigid frame. I feel comfortable now in the slight folding, and I forgive myself for aging for starting to wear life's sorrows on my face, for finding myself in twilight, forgetting certain times and dates. I love myself for trying, yet not quite succeeding as I should, and remembering all the times when I knew, I just knew I would. This grace I extend for me. I forgive myself for slowing, for the inevitable decline on my journey in this existence. Morning stiffness greets me with a smile, a dry reminder. Pain approaches irregularly and retreats in weary interludes. The mean-spirited mock the fumbling of the old, not recognizing their fate. Gray hair on either side is beginning to outline my face, but I feel wisdom in myself that I had not had before. Peace comes as refreshing winds through an open door. I no longer hide who I am in folds of conformity or strive for acceptance, for I accept the truth of my life. I am becoming a historical record to be inspected or perhaps one day to be resurrected. I love it, as I always do. That was beautiful. Brenda is one of the poets in progress for our dear, beloved, oh, help me out a minute. Our dear, beloved poet Dolores Laureate Kendrick. DC. Dolores, Dolores Kendrick. Kendrick. Thank you, sweetheart. Dolores Kendrick. As a matter of fact, um, Sister Joy, Bernardo, Brenda, and myself are four of the Poets in Progress, the Pips, yes. Yes. And the Poet Laureate had us read for her at different times at the Folger Shakespeare Library. And I'm telling you, Mommy and I, my number one fan, God rest her soul, we were so excited to go to the Folgers and me read there. But thank you, Brenda. Thank you. I'm very excited um, tonight 
Um, I have some friends there that are not poets. My dear sister, Cassandra Renee, my sweet niece, um, Ashia Beverly. And I want, I'm thinking of them, I want to do, and for all of you, I want to do this poem, Sweet Fragrance of a Rose. Fragrance of a rose so sweet, thoughts of rose-filled kindness knocks me off my feet, entwine my heart with love and poetry. Something I can really feel, something I can truly understand, a love so strong where only goodness lies. Colorful, vibrant attraction, precious, elegant beauty for all eyes. Velvety soft, tenderly touches delicate souls. Perpetually, a phenomenal gift to give, have, and behold. Yes, give me my flowers while we still live. Generously give love, ardent beauty, and sweet fragrance of a rose. Give someone a rose today or tomorrow. Thank you. I need to see some names or maybe hands of people that I haven't called on that would like to read. I don't know if my friend um, Queen Diane Wilburn Parks has made it back yet. Um, oh, I Ms. Uh, Lady Di, I've got a couple of names that I, I could suggest if you'd like. Okay, can you call on um, two people for me? Sure. Yes, thank you. I've got um, LKN Poetry, who's been waiting for a while, um, if they're still here. And Denori, if yeah. you're still here. I'm, okay, so those I'm will be the here. next two. Okay, and then we have D. Allen also. I had her name down. Okay. I mean, his, his name down. Teamwork okay. makes a dream work, Lady Di. <laughs> okay, so thank you so much, Rachel. Um, the first person that Rachel called on, I'm not familiar with that name, but would you please share? Yeah, um, thank you so much for having this platform. Uh, my name is Lacan, and I'm from Manila, the Philippines. I am a page performance and slam poet. Um, and I just made this piece. It's, um, it's, it's a character, the title. Uh, it's the plus character. And I hope you guys enjoy it. Okay, bring it, bring it, bring it. <laughs> Let me spell hope for you. T R U T H for your soaked sore in your poked lore is a mere purgatory story, a jolly folly of a rainbow arrow that you just borrow to make you real feel your heel is a twine spine, fine line, new shine in the violent silence of your bent luminescence. Yet you get to forget the debt regret. Mommed, the numbed, hummed, years is tears that shears your ears, cutting the thinking, tinkering by fluttering the fairy flood from your candy god that drowns with smirking clowns in a pity party of propinquity of shared lunacy of welcoming the hiding of shaming, shaking memes of everyone's dreams of screams at night alone in a groan, groan, alone. It'll be all right, light and bright soon. The moon, boon, coon, a bait the wake is an eight fate bait date. The gay stays in paraphrase replays. But you feel the steel heel deal is found in a spellbound playground of resting and lying with laying, groveling in the tranquil spill of a chill quill to a peroxide slide on your pride. You see? Saw, then flee, draw in to fake hugs or snake okay. earplugs. So I'm sorry, you know, that's to the extent. And we thank you so okay. kindly. The next person that, um, you. you're welcome. 
the next person that Rachel had on the list. Rachel, can you call that person for me again, please? Yeah, I believe it was Denari. Yeah, that's me. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you very much for everyone. Thank you, for, thank you for waiting all that time. I saw you earlier. Oh, no problem. I figure, you know, a lot of people here, so. No thank you. Answer. Not like I got anything else to do. Where are you calling from? Uh, I'm in PG. Kind okay. Of so I'm a member of the library system, so that's kind of how I got the fly. Okay. So and give us some contact information so we can invite you to other events. Okay, I'll put it in the chat. Okay, and anyone else that would like that? Okay. Okay, Delari, you can go. Okay. Uh, this one, excuse me if I stumble over, I actually just wrote it yesterday. Take uh, your time. Okay. It's called To the Ripe Mango in the Evening Twilight. After gratefully having you come home with me, the psychological consequences of recently experiencing a certain kind of drought eventually caused me to imagine how alike you are to a woman's breast. Soft, smooth, appetizing. From within the mild trance, I caressed you the same most preferable way, slowly and gently while contemplating how in either form would be a wonderful sensation to place my tongue, lips, and teeth upon you in that order. With some parts being just about circular, I found my body seemingly to soon autonomously move in the same way, perhaps because it has grown to be near instinctive for me to also do similar when there is opportunity to give you all my full kinesthetic attention. However, during the whirlwind, my eyes connected with the clock on the microwave, since it occurred in my kitchen, and spawned the realization that though it may be an enjoyable and ideal time of day for me to interact with a woman's breast, as is any time of day with the right one, it wasn't for consuming a mango due to its unwanted effect on my slumber. So into the fridge you must go until we may one last time observe a couple aspects of this similarity when my touch provides you with warmth and your taste provides me with energy as it has for as long as I can remember. Thank you. Thank you. That's quite interesting there. The metaphor. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, let's see. I said, was it D? I think I said D. The yeah, I'm one. here. Thank you, D. Come on, D. Allen. Welcome. Um, thank you. Let me switch on my camera now and get ready for most of y'all here in Prince George's County Library. Get ready to see the most unphotogenic face you will ever behold. Okay. Denzel, I am not. Anyways, I got two minutes on this open mic, so I'm only going to do one poem for y'all. Before, go before I go into it, if you like what you hear coming out of me tonight, you can respond by either putting your comments into Zoom chat, private message me, or press the reactions button for. Okay, and bring your poem, sweetheart. Thumbs up. Bring us your poem. And the poem comes out of the new Australian literary magazine, Dist. This is, this is called The Shut Dough. The shut locked dough stands between me and a disaster outside I cannot see, having no effect on animals in the least. It chooses to pounce on human beasts. Streets nearly empty, cars and buses free to roam. Shelter from disaster is easy to find inside my own home. 
Libraries remain closed. Restaurants will not serve. Rectangular wood on hinges will help me bend the curve, flattened for a longer, robust life beyond respirator mask and hands covered in latex. No telling how long this infection lasts. While the most foolhardy fall to the flow, safety is mine sequestered behind the shut lock dough. That poem was called The Shut Dough from issue number two of Dist. From this computer mic to your ears, I'm D. Allen. Thanks for listening. Thank you so much. Let's see, JL, JL Price. Sorry I didn't give you a, a warning, but are you available? Are you muted? Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is a wonderful event, and uh, Lady Di, congratulations on this, and thanks for allowing me to do this poem. It's Thank called... you. Thank you, JL. Thank you, Lady Di. Thank you, Lady Di. Thank you, Lady Di. Are you muted again? We can't hear you. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, sorry about that. The name of the poem is, It's Diverse. Some authors write books to help you to learn while others write books to help you discern. Books about love stories may cause you to cry. Other books about fate may make you sigh. Books about horror will scare you half to death. But I like books that help us to improve our own self-worth. Some books are written about war and distant trips. Books about fad and clothing tell us what is hip. Books about instructions slowly teaches us to build, while books about racing gives the reader many thrills. Some books such as comics are written to make you laugh. Other books written about family tell us about mom and dad. Books about health instruct us to keep our bodies well those written about trading instruct us when to buy and sell. Books like the Bible give me inspiration that keeps me straight. When I follow those instructions, I can better control my fate. Some write books that get many readers into deep trouble, like lottery books encourage you with your money to try to double. I like books that are sacred with their words like real treasures. Then old fashioned cookbooks tell us the correct amount to measure. So when I write like Langston, I'm not just trying to be funny, mostly trying to write about things that are bright and sunny. I try to write to uplift and ultimately inspire. Books to rekindle the flame and to take each of us higher. Yet that's not always possible, so I have to be well versed. The one thing I aim for is for my writing to be diverse. May the words from my pen enlighten and soothe. May it give you peace of mind and never cause you to brood. Reading and writing are both enriching and good for the soul. Try them as much as you can. Make it one of your goals. Wonderful, wonderful message there. Thank you so kindly. Thank you, JL. Thank you, Lady Di. Queen, Diane Wilburn Parks, are you ready? I am ready. Hey, this honey, so I'm beautiful. I'm glad you made it back. Yes, I had to make it back. It is amazing. Class. This Thank is you. such an amazing event. And of course, I wanted to come back. Um, now, I'm not sure how many poems, but I have two poems, one short and one kind of in the middle. But if you want me to only do one, I can do one. We only doing one because okay. we're over time already. Okay, I'm sorry, and I appreciate it's okay. you allowing me to go. So I'll thank just read. You. Yes, thank you so much. I'm going to read The Inherited Journey. Okay. I look across fields that flung purple journeys, heavy with sound. Then I go back to the fields of my mind, desperate to see, but come up empty. I am here, where you were, where you plucked the earth, where your whole body was fractionalized and demoralized, 
where you stood was bent, your fullness emptied. I reached inside your footprints and fingerprints, but the earth has covered you in thick green grass. I know that you're still here because you are pulling me and the will of your spirit will not let go. I lay beside you in the green pastures and hear your whisper still wailing. My bones crackle like wood burning. The sparks that have spun up are raw. I feel you rattling in my spirit, your bones beating, threading into tattered stories, but the blood is still sealed with the blood of Jesus, never broken. I am from the leaves and the trees of my people, from the eyes and the forgiving hearts of my people. I am from the songs and the hopes and the dreams and the will of my people. I am from the trials and the tribulations and the forgive-me-nots of my people, from the hands of pickers, growers, sowers, builders, diggers, cleaners, cookers, fetchers, leaders, thinkers, doers, believers, all are my people. I am kept by the field of my mind's eye, where the field is forever becoming much clearer. And the story of my people will reap a harvest from then to now, from as far back as oceans decide, as up close as 40 acres, to the droplets of rain that dances in between the songs of rivers of hallelujahs to God's everlasting love and favor. I am the footprint, the voice of the whispers of long ago that spirits the will to fill the hollowed out stories of long ago. Thank you. Ooh, wonderful, sweetie, wonderful. We have um, Tom Donlin. Tom Donlin still here? Think so. Yeah, that's it's okay. I know we're over time. You can go ahead. Oh, really? You don't want to? She gave me. She said that I could get all my people in. Am I the only one left? No. Well, I can. Uh -huh. I can pass. You want me to read? Okay. okay. Yes. Yes, please. All right. I've got a second monitor. That's where all that light's coming from. I'll sit well, back. Um. Okay, I read this on Hiram's review one time, and it's called Unity. And I wrote it about a year ago, and it was a workshop to try to bring Americans back together. Yes. Unity. We are marvelously made. People, miracles, who fit no rigid singular model. Look at how our fingers work, how they can hold another hand. Help clear the blur in a friend's eye. We can see without limit and count stars. I see you, brother and sister. I hear your cries and smell the smoke from the burning in your soul. I hug you and feel the beat of your troubled heart. For years I've asked at the Spanish mass, Lord, I want to see your face. Señor, quiero ver tu rostro. At the nativity celebration, a line of two-year-old Hispanic girls entered in white dresses with angel wings and walked to the manger where Mary held her child. One of the angels stopped, turned to the audience, and danced to the guitars and song in Spanish by the choir, El Coro. She had every head turned. Lord, I see your face. Señor. Veo tu rostro. Let me see you in everyone. Let me show the power of love and forgiveness. Beautiful, beautiful words. Thank you so much. Yep. Thank you so much for bringing those words. It fits right in with our theme for today and for life, unity. Unity right. brings power. There's power in uniting together. And we all must get out and vote. Vote, everyone. Bring the power to see a new light on this world and on our nation. Vote, 
and take someone with you. Next poet, John Berry. John, are you still there? I'm here, Lady Di. Thank you, John. Thank you for joining. Yeah, yeah, I'm really I'm thrilled to be here. Um, so I have a lighter poem uh, from uh, one that I wrote a little, uh, I don't know, several months ago. Okay. This is how to read a poem to a narcissistic demagogue. So here's the thing. You'll have to say the poem is dedicated to him. It won't be true, but at least you'll have his attention. Then you may want to mention any foreign sounding words or the ones leaping with syllable or the nuance of jest to allay any fears he has for words conspiring against him. Any adjectives more colorful than great or amazing, fantastic, great or amazing may require the soft pencil of chiaroscuro to shade in the lines. Assume no innate understanding of simple ideas like empathy, generosity of spirit, or compassion. Pretty much you'll want to explain the poem in detail before you begin. At this point, you can announce the title. If it happens to be anything vague, requiring more than a single sport of thought, or one concretely Greek like Thanatopsis, or God forbid, untitled, make something up. A simple stamp of a brown cow or a red fire hydrant will do. The smallest drop of simplicity to wet the blankness in his eyes. Now you may begin. Read slowly, offering each word, each line, like teas balanced on the blade of a knife like a yummy airplane of carrots taxiing down the runway and into the hangar. Have the good common sense, as you would at any reading, to make contact with his eyes, that secret match to candles wick, good readers light to be certain the listener is not distracted by his phone. Above all else, read every word, every line as it appears on the page, no straying into rambling, incomprehensible trays for yourself. Resist, resist the urge to blurt out any resentments you have for the stubborn refusal of orange to rhyme. Be honest, even if it reveals you are vulnerable, human, a creature of toilet habits and occasional mistakes. Read nothing epic, nothing tinted with the smokes and smells of history, Nothing requiring a world view, a basic grasp of geography, the order of the planets, no grainy black and white scenes of battles, wars, or events as written by the victor. Whatever else you do, don't expect too much. Assume no posture indicating wisdom, nor the snaky oils of science to sell. Be true to yourself. Stand forward from the back end of his vanity, except that part about the dedication and necessary evil. Simply read and hope he understands the limestone hills of someone's pain, the softer side of twittering birds. Thank you, John. Great message. Thank you so much. Thank you. My dear friends, Laura and Jeff, who's first? Laura? <laughs> Good evening, Lady Di. What a wonderful program we are enjoying. Thank you so much, Laura. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. We just came from hiking, so we're a little disheveled, but we're here. And I'm just going to read um, on behalf of Jeff and I, and I'm going to read a poem in honor of International Overdose Awareness Day, which is August 31st. See y'all if you want to check it out. The poem okay. is entitled, Mickey's Last Apology. Hey coach, that blender was fresh. Beautiful baby in its box, unopened. Protein shakes and working out till I am too spent to do anything but go to sleep. That was gonna save me. 
Thanks for believing that. I know, I know. I hope you don't regret the time before last. It's how you bent the rules for my ass, took me to Gold's in rehab. Yeah, I fucked that up. It was true what I told you, though. I didn't. I didn't have to hide under my bed at 2 a.m., thinking the fire alarm moaning in the night, an IED victim screaming. Nobody likes to see a Marine looking weak. Being a homeless vet is a science, and this foobar tent camp is old school. Dying here just before breakfast, bent over my shit in prayer, is not that different from the desert sand that I'll never shake off me now. Listen, do me a favor. Tell my son in his dry-eyed abandonment, it doesn't matter which pandemic caught me with my pants down. War, heroin, COVID-19. I was a dead man pumping iron. Thanks, Lady Di. Thanks, everybody. I think we might have a couple more on deck. I know we were waiting on Brian. Is that is there still, is Brian still here? Is that okay, Lady Di, that Brian has a chance? Are you able to unmute? I see you, I see you, Brian. <laughs> I'm here, yes. I got a menorah behind me. Okay, oh, yeah, you're, you're ready. Oh, I am? Oh, gracias. Okay, so uh, I'm trying to pull up this poem right now. Okay. It is called, Because Dervishes Still Whirl on Hotter Than July Nights. I am standing still, stagnating while the world around me is swirling and twirling. My existence is dizzied by whirling dervishes that may only exist in my imagination by virtue of anxiety or doctor prescribed medication. I feel I've fallen into an eddy, drowning, trying to climb out, fingers haplessly gripping water droplets to no avail. But I am not in any body of water, except maybe a sweat soaked pillow on extremely hot, humid, unair conditioned July night. I stand by my assessment that Stevie Wonder's Hotter Than July is undisputedly one of the top five soul music albums of all time. I'm no longer 54, but 14, obsessed with Stevie's music. Having tried tequila for the first time, having had one or two shots too many, my brother Paul walks me up two flights of stairs to my bedroom, pushes his drunken brother onto my bed, and walks away cackling like a Shakespearean witch. I'm on my back horizontally on a vertically oriented bed. My brain tries to instruct me how to reorient my head to my pillow. The ceiling starts spinning relentlessly like a possessed wheel of fortune minus a smiling Vanna White. But this is just a memory of a middle-aged man living in self-imposed isolation in a pandemic who feels like tiny tornadoes follow him around, selectively sucking any common sense or creativity left in his being out from his brain through his ear sockets without lifting his substandard mass into the airborne eddies. Maybe I should follow the advice of the mystic poet who advised to celebrate life by dancing instead of watching others dance, become a whirling dervish in my own right because the dervishes teach us if we teach ourselves to whirl and twirl, we are not culturally appropriating, but we have learned to, we have learned by watching them how to not let life make us feel falsely dizzy. Thank you very much. Thank you, Brian. Wow, that was a great message there. Thank you so much. I want to say thank you to everyone that came this evening. We are um, over time and we want to thank Rachel and thank the library, the Prince George's County Memorial Library System. And they have in there, the, I saw in the yard of the um, Upper Marlboro Branch, Black Lives Matter. Boy, that was a great feeling because the library is just so dear to my heart. And to see that in their yard was a, just a great feeling. 
Thank you to everyone that came today, all of my friends and all of my new friends. Please place your email in the chat because we can get a print of it. Hopefully Rachel can print it. And I think we're going to be, we forgot to let you know that we are filming it. Um, so I hope everyone's okay with that. And um, I just want to say good night. And Rachel, you can have the last word. <laughs> So thank you so much to our wonderful host. Thank you for everyone to have the courage to share. It was just inspiring. Uh, I wanted to say that, again, we want to cre uh, thank Creative Suitland, Lady Di, and Grace Cavalieri. Um, our next open mic is September 30th at 7 p.m., and that will be hosted by Diane Wilbon uh, Parks. So we are really excited about that. The theme is power of hope and light. So that should be wonderful. There's that so many be. different ways we can go with that. Um, so we'll so see you um, next month, September 30. September 30th. Sure, see you there. Yeah, go, go on the public library um, site and register now so that it can come to you in your email, you know, and, re and continuous reminders of that. Okay, do that now so we can have fun again with my friend, Diane Wilburn Parks. And I'll also be remiss if I didn't say another thank you to Grace Cavalieri for being here. Um, she has such a tight schedule and she readily said absolutely when I asked her to um, be my special guest today. So you all witnessed three poet laureates tonight and heard wonderful messages that I hope that you will take what you need to heart. And the main thing that Lady Di wants you to do is to vote and give someone a flower before the week is out. Thank you. Bye everyone. Love you. Lovely set Lady Di, absolutely. Thank you, Thank you Sister Joy. Bye, Lady Di. I enjoyed it. It was wonderful. Bye, sweetheart. You're so Thank dear. Thank you, to Rachel. Me. Bye, Thank my boy. Thank you so much. It was lovely. Thank you.